So I'm back again with another short video. I just wanted to come to you and bring an update um, about the Larry Nasser case. Um, the video before this one, which was uploaded this week um, because of technical difficulties, I talked about Larry Nasser, who was the American uh, gymnast physician for the gymnastics team and for the Olympic team, who used his position as a doctor to sexually abuse as much as 150 girls and it was big news recently and it's still big news because it has been um, in the media but this week um, as I said I wanted to come and do an update on the whole case because he has been sentenced now he has been sentenced to um, 100 to 40 to 175 years for criminal sexual um, conduct and he admitted to using his trusted position um, in a medical capacity to assault and molest girls under the guise of treatment. Now um, he wasn't sorry for his actions and a matter of fact during the proceedings he continued to belittle the suffering of the victims. Now in relation to the charges, originally I um, made an error. The 161 um, survivors who came forward, I thought they were all um, part of that original trial. But it has said here in a statement that the, 174, the 40 to 175 years are in relation to the original seven girls that came forward um, and as part of this original trial, um, this is what the 175 years is in relation to. So for those seven girls, um, he got 140 to 175 years. But the other 161 victims added credibility to the original seven. So that is how it has been, um, that is how the breakdown of the sentencing has gone. He offered a short statement in court, apologising, um, saying that the hearing the seven days of victim impact statements had shaken him to the core. I'm just paraphrasing, but he said there are no words that can describe the depth and breadth of how sorry he is for all that has occurred. An acceptable apology to all of you is impossible to write and convey. I will carry your words with me for the rest of your for the rest of my days. Now he said this statement, this closing statement um, in court, but this wasn't. This was after he submitted a letter to the judge, whining and complaining about the detriment to his mental health, having to listen to days and days of victim impact statements. You know he accused the judge of showboating and um, you know doing it for the media and also accused the his victims of doing that as well it was almost like you know he was um, adding even more pain and torment to what they had already gone through now judge Akula said in her closing statement and I must say I really admire this woman I don't know I just I just really find it very um, very thoughtful and and correct the way she has handled this case not just from an emotional level um at best capacity within her role obviously she's a judge she's there to administer the law but also in the way she's legally gone about it she was very um during clips i watched of uh some of the proceedings when he when the letter was submitted and during other little things to do with nasa she was very gracious and professional in the way that she handled him but I'm just going to read a little bit of her statement and I'm going to post a link to her full closing statement for this case and I think that if you can check it out because it was really powerful what she had to say she has said that um, she has signed his death warrant and that he will never leave prison Judge Aquila said, Aquilina said of NASA that he doesn't get that he is a danger, doesn't get what he has done, and she just made a remark saying that she doesn't believe he can ever be rehabilitated. Now, you know, a lot of 
people who commit this type of crime can never own up to what they've done and this is part of the problem in order to be able to be rehabilitated first you have to admit that you have a problem and that you've done something wrong and that there is an issue and during this case Larry Nasser has never been able to do that he has played the victim even in his statement his closing statement he's talking about all the good work he did as a doctor he doesn't get it that actually you betraying even one of those girls' trust in the position that you were in as a doctor ruined every single thing that you may have did that was good for patients, for your patients. So he still doesn't understand it. He still doesn't get it. And she has said that she believes he will never be rehabilitated. So the 40 to 175 years will kick in after he has, after he has done the original 60 years that he was sentenced for in November 2017 for having child, I hate, this, I hate the terminology, but this is what they use, child pornography and indecent images on his computer. He was sentenced to 60 years for that charge in November. So she, Judge Aquilina has said that their sentences are to run concurrently. And she said, if you manage to outlive that one sentence, and she mentioned that, you know, um, by God's grace, because he is gracious, then you will still have to ser start serving the 175 years. So it's safe to say that he will never get out of prison. Also in her closing statement, Judge Aquilina gave a little bit of her background and I really kind of resonated with what she had to say because what people need to understand is there is a price, for, there is a price to pay for speaking out. No one who speaks out is well liked, well loved, because a lot of time people don't want to hear the truth. A lot of the time people don't want to hear the truth. So if you want to be somebody that stands out for right, and I'm getting to learn this and I'm getting to understand this, it will cost you. She said, I came to this country stateless and unnaturalized. My father's Maltese, my mother is German, and I was raised on old country values. And my grandmother always told me and my parents always told me, my grandfather too, that America is the greatest country. I believe that. That is why I served in the military. That is why I've always done community service. I am not well liked because I speak out. I don't have many friends because I speak out. If you ask me a question, you better be ready for the answer. I speak out because I want change, because I don't believe in hiding the truth. I'm not saying I'm always right, but I try. Such a powerful woman, such a powerful statement. I, I think she's a woman of integrity and character and she has strength because it takes strength to speak out. In my own small capacity as an advocate, as a, a voice for the voiceless in relation to child sexual abuse, you have to speak out. People don't like it. I can relate to her. I understand what it means not to be popular. But who's going to be a voice for the voiceless? Who's going to be a voice for the children who are coming up in sexual abuse? It's not enough to turn a blind eye. Because in turning a blind eye, we enable those who are in positions of power, those who are in positions of trust, to continue to do what they're doing. And that is not what we're about. That is not what I'm about. And I hope if you are somebody that's been through it, that one day you'll be able to find your voice too. She gave some statistical facts about the USA, saying that one in seven girls and one in 20 boys will be sexually abused by their 18th birthday. In the USA, she said that 400,000 babies will be victims of CSA, will be born victims of CSA. How sad is that? We need to do more as, and I know she was talking about in America, but we need to do more as a global community, as a society, to bring down the illness that is sexual abuse, this epidemic that has taken grip for centuries and has just continued to rise. And, you know, we need to do something about it. She said to the um, survivors to speak out and become part of the army. And I agree with her. We may never ever be able to eradicate sexual abuse, but in raising awareness, sharing our stories, sharing our voice, we can prevent people like Larry Nassar's of this world, like my father, like so many other people who are doing this crime and think that, you know, they're just getting away with it because of the silence. We need to just continue to speak out and be able to stop people like this. So as Larry Nassar starts his sentence, I can only hope 
that you know he can think really about what he's done it's too late for him now but maybe it will serve as a warning to those who continue to sexually abuse children and i hope that the survivors in this case are able to find healing and restoration for their lives and that whatever was taken from them will be restored that you know you know in terms of their self-esteem and confidence and other things that it will be able to be restored